Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Will It Fail? What if you found yourself in a natural disaster like a earthquake or a flood or just a hurricane or something and you found yourself without power? Now if you had a grid tie system, it could potentially be down as the grid would be down. If you had a uh, off-grid system, it could be potentially hit by lightning and all your equipment be destroyed. But if you could power critical devices such as your phone or handheld radio and 12 volt appliances, with just a solar panel and a couple of cheap parts. No inverter, no battery, no charge controller. In this video, we will see how we can power USB devices and 12 volt appliances using just one of these, a DC to DC converter, AKA buck converter. This particular converter has a wide ranging input voltage of 20 to 90 volts, which makes it ideal for this type of situation. You can use it with practically any solar panel you might find lying around. Let's get started. Okay, so here's our buck converter. It's got an input of 20 to 90 volts and an output of 12 volts at 16 amps. So your kit will come with three modules, a switch, a 12 volt car adapter outlet, and a USB outlet, a faceplate, and three ring lock nuts. Now, I already wired the switch, so when you wire the switch, if up is on, so up is on. Make sure the first pin is going to be your negative. So you'll have your long wire coming off like that. And the two jumpers will go into your two modules, USB and car adapter outlet. And then the middle pin for the switch will be the jumpers going to the positive USB and the positive on the car adapter outlet. The power source or positive from your battery or buck converter will be the last pin like this, uh, that'll be back, that will be your power in. If you look closely on each module, the switch and the two adapter outlets, you'll find a positive and a negative. On this, in this case of the switch, the negative is actually the gold pin. But if you look at the USB module, the positive is the gold pin. So don't try to think that the gold pins are always going to be negative or positive because they'll, they'll be reversed like this one gold pin. It doesn't even have a gold pin. So just remember on the switch it's the negative one and just look for the negative and positive symbols on each module. It is best to install the switch on the far right side or left side as the jumper wires will not reach. After wiring the switch feed the wires through the ring nut and tighten the ring nut. And now the switch is installed. Now we can install the car adapter outlet module in the center hole. And now it's installed. There are many configurations of the USB module that you can purchase individually. This one includes standard USB QC and the newer USB C or PD power delivery ports. The PD port can deliver up to 65 watts of power for high power devices such as tablets and notebooks. Next, we can take our negatives from the switch and jump it over to the minus and the minus of the USB and car adapter outlet modules. Next, we can take the positive jumper and finish the remaining connections. Now our USB car adapter module panel is complete. Okay, now I have the car adapter module plugged into a battery and we'll see if it works. There it is, 12.8 volts. Finally, we can wire the USB module to the buck converter using these nuts. So we're going to take the output of the buck converter, which is this center uh, black wire and the yellow uh, output wire here. So it's just going to be black to back in this case. Put our wire nut and then the yellow or positive output goes to the red positive on the USB module. It's all done. Now it's ready to connect to the solar panel. Okay, so these are the appliances we'll be using. Uh, these are all made by a company called Road Pro. With the exception of this little guy, this is the rice cooker I got on Amazon. So this is a saucepan, and this will use about 12 amps. Um, this is a frying pan, it uses 13 amps, and the coffee maker 
comes in at 15 amps. All these appliances can be run on about 200 watts of power or less. All these appliances will run off a standard car adapter 12 volt outlet. All right, so for the USB side of things, we're gonna be testing these devices. We have a handheld radio and charger. We have a short wave radio, um, some AA batteries, USB rechargeable, and a flashlight, USB rechargeable. We will be using a 250 watt solar panel with a VOC of about 38 volts. Let's quickly do a power test. It looks like we're getting about 175 watts. Just to show you uh, the power coming off a single 250 watt panel. How this could be a bit <laughs> scary. Check this out. That's one panel, 250 watts. Well, it's about 180 watts and at 38 volts. So be careful when you're doing this. Here I am using MC4 pigtail connectors. The female connector will connect to the positive or red input wire on the converter. The labels I have on the pigtail are in relation to the buck converter. Normally these would be reversed, but in this case we are connecting directly to a load. If you choose to use wire nuts, be sure to strip the wire back about one half inch to allow for good contact. If the connection is not good, it can heat up. It would be better to use XT60 connectors or even butt connectors. I am taking the minimalist approach here with just a single panel. Never use wire nuts in a solar system as they are not really intended for DC current. Okay, there we go. Now we got our MC4 connectors. Now we'll put our inline fuse on. Plug in our positive side. And we'll plug in our negative side. Now we should have power to the buck converter. We can turn on our USB and we should see this uh, power meter light up. Check it out, isn't that cool? So we have a solar panel powering this USB panel directly. No battery, no inverter, no charge controller, straight off the solar panel. So let's plug in our two radios and turn it on. So you can see our radio came on. And this is our handheld Channel mode. radio. It's pretty cool. So we're using uh, a half an amp, 0.42 amps. I love Snap-on. Plug in some more. Batteries. So now we're charging the batteries and the flashlight. See everything blinking. Now let's plug in my phone to the other USB port over here. Look at that, our voltage has dropped to 11.8. We're pulling one amp. We'll just clamp it right there. 1.8 amps. Before we test the cookware, I will swap out the USB module for another car adapter outlet module I had laying around. A nice feature of this system is that you can purchase individual modules to customize your panel how you like. Okay, so we're gonna first do the skillet and we're in the rice cooker because we cannot run this one at the same time, it's too much power. So these two together should be fine. It's gonna be pushing it to the limit though. And then we'll do the coffee later. I told my wife about this video and she really wanted to help out. So here she is. So we're gonna turn this on and we'll see how much power we're gonna get. This buck converter has a max of 16 amps output. So we're already at 11 amps and these things are still warming up. So let's we'll see how far we get. Start that. We're pulling just over 14 amps. And these wires back here, these things are almost hot to the touch. And rice. Everything's at its limit. This buck converter is at its limit. The solar panel is at its limit. These wires are at their limit. <laughs> well, yeah, the socket may be good for 250 watts, but the wires going to it, definitely not. All right, I think we're about 30 minutes in and we are, man, we are really pushing the wire here. Look at this. 
it's on 14.96 amps oh there we go 15 not good not good i'm trying to keep the <laughs> keep the air on these wires so they don't burn up and uh, let's check the rice see how that looks almost cooked it's almost done look at that just a little bit of water left in there the rice cooker just finished and we just have our pan left let's see what it looks like i lost audio at this point so i'll just comment it's been about 45 minutes and the rice is well cooked the sausage and egg are well done as well and it all smells so great rept is served the coffee should take about 15 to 20 minutes however it looks like some clouds are on the way so we might not have consistent power all right so it's taking a little bit longer than expected because the clouds keep on coming in and out in and out we're dropping our power up and down but uh, our coffee started though you can see it sort of fogging up there they're starting to percolate watch what happens when the clouds come through you see the volt you see the amps drop and then the buck converter starts squealing like a little pig up right now <laughs> i'm one eighth and we just lost our power down to eight amps it still works it's just I want to put more water it takes longer See if we can get the uh, amps coming back up. Oh, there it goes. Came right back up. Then we lost it again. Come on, let's go. Get back up there. All right, back in action. The clouds are making this really difficult. But I think we got enough coffee. <laughs> That's it. We got our breakfast. Took two hours. Coffee, <laughs> eggs, fried egg and rice and sausage. First try some uh, solar powered sausage. If I had no power and this is all I had to cook my food, I'll eat this every day. The coffee is nice and warm. Yeah. Everything else is cold. <laughs> now, although that buck converter is great for using on any panel lying around, um, if you wanted to purchase a specific panel that's not too big, yet small enough to carry around, uh, you might look at one of these. This is sort of Renergy. It's a 100 watt panel. It puts out 20.4 volts on the low side. So that buck converter will accept 20 volts minimum. So it barely cuts the wire on the low side. And this panel is only 89 bucks and it's a 22% efficiency. And I believe it weighs about 30 pounds. So you could potentially tote this around. You could put it in your car. You could definitely mount it on top of like a toy hauler. If you drive a big rig, great use case. Put it on top of your cab, run the wires down to your buck converter and use your uh, 12 volt appliances. Yeah. 100 watt you would need two of these to really utilize the uh, buck converter well let's hook it up and see what we can get out of it this panel is brand new and is producing just over 90 percent of its rated power let's see what we get 12 volts so with 90 watts off the solar panel, we should be able to power any USB device. Probably have a hard time powering car adapter appliances. All right, so we got uh, some batteries hooked up. We got the phone and a flashlight. Let's see how much power. Almost two amps. Let's try something bigger. It runs, but it's struggling. Let me unplug all the USB stuff. That's almost full speed. So yeah, we could probably do quite a lot with just a 100 watt panel. I'm gonna take the output of the buck converter and try to charge this battery. Now, since this buck converter only puts out 12 volts, we won't be able to charge this battery very far because the voltage curve of a LiPo 4 battery 
uh, it's going to reach 12 volts very quickly. Once the battery reaches 12 volts, it comes up to the same voltage as the buck converter. We will no longer to put, we will no longer be able to put any more power into the battery. But for a lead acid battery, you could probably get the battery charged uh, quite a ways. That's why having an output of 14.5 volts would be ideal. But let's see if we can charge this battery. I have this battery completely discharged, so the voltage should be less than 12 volts. So currently we're reading 11.3 volts. 11.29 volts. I have the buck motor connected to this alligator clip. On the other end, is I have a ring, a ring terminal on the other end. So we're going to pull up the BMS and we'll see if we can get any current flow going into this battery. And you're probably thinking, yeah, why not just use a charge controller? Yeah, well, the point of this is to be minimalistic as possible and see how many things we can actually do with this type of setup. I'm going to connect. I don't know what's going to happen. I've never done this. We're doing this live. I'm doing it live. Alright, so we're going to connect this up and see what happens. Make sure everything's good. Check it out. 11, 12 amps. We are charging the battery with 12 amps. Check it out. That is really cool. Yeah, 11.2, 11.5 on the clamp meter. And 10.8 on the uh, on the BMS. So I'm curious how many amp hours we could actually get into this battery. I don't have a shunt, so I can't really track it. But we can take the number. It says remain capacity 0.0 percent or 0, 0.0 amp hours on the BMS. So if we can just watch that, and we'll see how many amp hours we can get in to the battery. Hopefully the shunt, the internal shunt on the BMS is is accurate. In an emergency situation, sure, you could do this, but there's no protection. If the battery was full, it would keep on trying to charge. It would be up to the BMS to then uh, stop the incoming voltage, so no safety on these. So now I swapped the uh, 250 watt panel for a 335 watt panel to see if the panel is not the problem because it's about 4 p.m. Uh, but there's no change, the, the amp output is exactly the same. So at this point it wouldn't matter if I even put a 800 watt solar panel on the input because it's not going to put out any volts, any more volts because the battery voltage is too high. Dang it, we're still at 0%. I can't even get it to register 1% on the battery. The battery voltage is now almost equal to the buck converter output voltage. That's funny, I was going to shut the battery off and I looked at the display and it got 1%. <laughs> so you can see the BMS says 0%. Remain capacity 0, 0.0. But the display is registering 1%. So. Alright, just to prove that it's not the solar output or the output of this that's restricting our voltage flow, we're going to short circuit the buck converter really quick and watch this. This has a max of 16 amps, so if the solar panel is putting out enough power, we should see at least 16 amps. Don't do this at home. Wow, I registered 20. <laughs> yeah, so I looked high and low to find a plug and play version with a high input voltage uh, range of 20 to 90 with a decent output of like 14 to 15 volts but I could not find one for the life of me. But there are variable units out there. They're not very beginner friendly because you have to uh, basically tune your output voltage and input voltage. And depending on the input voltage, it will determine your output voltage. But they do exist. Uh, there will be a link to one in the description below. So I went back and I looked uh, to check the price on this particular unit, the 16 amp unit. And it's no longer on there. They only have the 10 amp. And after the 10 amp, you have to go to 20 or 25 amps. So I must have got the last one. <laughs> so, But I included links to the description below for the 20 and 25 amp units, as well as everything else you might need to build the system. So a couple things to note about the USB car adapter outlet panel. The wires they give you are pretty thin. And I looked about at 10 of these things, and they all have the same thin wires. Those wires are rated for the USB module itself. 
not necessarily the uh, car adapter outlet. The car adapter outlet module is just a dumb device, right? It can handle 200, 250 watts of output, but the wires going to it and the fuse that they sometimes put in line are only rated for like 10 amps. So if you get one with the fuse, just cut the fuse off and I would definitely upgrade, recommend upgrading the wires to like a 12 or 14 gauge wire. But you can run up to about 15 amps with those 18 gauge wires, but they'll get quite warm, but it will work. Yeah, so it's pretty amazing what you can do with this simple setup. I think the most practical uh, use is a fan or cooking, but since there's no battery, you have to do it during the day. And I think in the future, I'll do a video where I'll make a small box with a tiny battery in there. Uh, so you can actually store the power and use that power during the nighttime. It'd be the perfect little camping power supply. In the near future, I'll include links to the parts used to build the system as well as a schematic on how it's wired on my website. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.